Hey, hey, hey. Hope everybody's doing good. Carl Bryan coming at you. My boy, Kenya Pat. Kenya Pat, how goes it? It goes well. Hope you're doing well. Yep. Stuff. Things are good. good stuff. And for everybody listening, we just finished a call going over the group coaching software and some improvements and some adjustments thanks to our amazing beta testers, which there's about to be a whole lot more of them soon. Little cat out of the bag. Um, make sure you're at Virtual Business Coaching Mastery. By the way, guys, if you're not booked into Virtual Business Coaching Mastery, you are missing out. Um, it is this Friday. And as part of that, you are going to get a preview into the group coaching software that I think is going to knock your socks off. So if you want to go to Virtual Business Coaching Mastery and you are not enrolled, make sure you get to uh, just send Adrian an email and he'll be able to send you where to go and how to get logged in. And as part of that, you get a free book, um, low cost, no cost marketing strategies. So it is worth its weight in gold. But anyway, so we just finished doing some magic on the group coaching software. And to say that we're excited would be understatement of the year. But uh, one bucket load of hard work. But you agree, Pat, anything you'd add? What about the, uh, what do you, what do you want to say about the group coaching software? Anything, buddy? Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting because the longer we're in the project, the more the, the people bring ideas to the table. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's an amazing idea. We've absolutely got to do that. And, you know, we haven't thought of it for eight months and now it's right in front of us as we're about to launch. And the re reality is it's <laughs> going to take a little time to, you know, to put in there and to make it better and all that. And it's going to be better, but it's going to be this constantly evolving, beautiful beast. And I'm really excited about it. Uh, so anyway, we're, it's just, it's in beta. It's about to be released. Um, and I'm really excited. It's a big, big project coming to fruition here. So, beauty, love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, buddy. Well, I'll tell you what. And guys, this is a Q and A call, and I got to tell you, Pat and I have about a zillion things to be working on here. We uh, we we bring the final touches, the group coaching software together, a seven month project, no less. And again, we've got all the software engineers are all up or they're doing nothing but group coaching software to bring it all together. So um, let's do some Q&A. And in order to do Q&A, I need Q from you guys so that we can do the A. So if you got any questions, just um, either raise your hand or chuck a uh, question into the box. And uh, prior to doing that, I'm going to open up a few folks here to say hello. Where are we going to go? I'm going to float through here. I've got my name Envy going on. I love a good name. Paul Tut. There you go. Tut. That's a cool last name. Paul Tut. We're coming for you, buddy. There he is. Oh, Paul. You got on. There he is. He's yes, unmuted. Paul, what's happening? I'm doing well. How are you? Doing fabulous. Doing fabulous. Give us the 101. And Inspire all of the coaches listening and all those coaches that'll be listening to the to the recording. What do you got cooking? So um, mostly um, got a couple of live events um, that I've scheduled through the local business chamber. Um, also joined the Rotary Club recently. Uh, so a lot of networking and um, you know hobnobbing, rubbing elbows with people that either might be small business owners, medium business owners, or would be great referrals. Had a really good discussion today with one of the contacts from the Rotary Club who is a financial advisor. Oh, and perfect. I'm trying to work him to see if he'd be interested, but he says he knows a number of his clients who are probably in a sweet spot. Um, so it'd probably work out some sort of a JV arrangement with him. Um, I'm about to go through uh, the next or the Session two, um, went through session one with Holly Ball for role playing. I have session two with Regina coming up on Thursday. So just rocking through all these and um, trying to get things organized and, and uh, get some some real clients in the door. Beautiful. I'd like to see it. What about in the software? Have you managed to get into the software and poke your nose around? I have, yeah. The software is um, 
after going through the 100K training and a number of different practice sessions, you know, creating test accounts and test assessments, I've uh, been able to um, do pretty well with it. I think the first role play session was was good. I seem to have some pretty positive feedback from, from Holly on that. Uh, a couple things to work on, but uh, overall I feel it's uh, very easy to navigate, very easy to walk through. It's just making sure that you have the, the right vernacular for all the different um, aspects of the uh, Jumpstart 12. Yep, good stuff. So would you recommend for anybody listening that hasn't done the role play with Holly? What do you think? Is that, was that a valuable experience? I think it's very valuable. I mean, you know, you can go through it on your own uh, because a lot of the scripting that you will hear in the 100K training, for example, is is good and able to be something you can uh, kind of personalize and make your own words. But it's really helpful to have somebody who uh, is really looking to try to test you on a couple different aspects. Um, you know, for example, she wanted to sell her business and I didn't get that deep into that, so that was some good feedback. But other than other than that, I think all of the questions and comments and um, you know back and forth that happens with Holly because she's skilled at pulling out the right things is very valuable. Awesome, don't I want to hear? All right, cool. And any uh, any questions on the uh, the software? On that note, I have none. Cool, bananas. All right, well, good feedback. Appreciate it. And we're going to put you back on mute here, Paul. And while we're in Paul's, why don't we go to our next Paul? Paul Xavier. Speaking of rock stars, this boy is legit. Paul Xavier, we're coming for you, buddy. Yourself muted. Got to unmute yourself if you want to say hi, Paul. Looks like he might be. I saw a hand go up. Hang on, Paul. Give it one more sec. Paul Xavier. All right. Keep uh let's keep cranking here. Okay, let's go to Scott Proposky. Again, another another one of my name NB folks. Scott Proposky. Hey, 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 how's it going? Yeah. You're live. Wow, I'm live on the radio. Welcome to <laughs> College Radio <laughs> Station. Uh hey thanks. <laughs> um always How's doing, Scott? What's happening? It's going fantastic. And I, you know, I, I must say, jumping on these calls in the afternoon where I typically would try to get a cup of coffee and listen to you guys, you just pump me up. And every time you're on the <laughs> call, you're completely consistent. You know, you're never down, you're never up. You just, you're right. Well, you're always up, but you're always at the same level. So that's the one thing I do appreciate. So, oh, appreciate it, man. We appreciate it. And on that note, speaking of being up, Somebody I know is going to be presenting at Virtual Business Coaching Mastery. Mm, give, us, wonder, give us a little preview of what our who. folks are going to get to see. Yes, yeah, so I'm on Friday at 10.30ish, I believe. And um, um, it's coaching. It's, it's the other perspective of the client. How, how, easy, how to make a million dollars in your company is actually all not that difficult. Um, so I'm going to walk you through some of those processes that I did um, in that space, in that world, and give a different point of view. Beautiful. And give real quick before I close you up, give us a little yeah. bit of a preview of your background and some of the folks that you've worked with, which is an impressive list, by the way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my, my, you know, my former life, you know, you know, back 13 months ago, way back 13 months ago, <laughs> I worked with uh, the New England Patriots, the Boston Celtics, um, the White House. Oh. President Obama, and um, I just crushed the photography industry and created a multi -biz, multi million dollar business uh, around the country. And um, but due to COVID, uh, we had to make a slight adjustment, <laughs> and this is what we're doing. Um, but that valuable information that I learned that I can pass on to others is is really my passion now. And this is this is why this comes so natural to me. Because I lived it. I I did it, and it wasn't all that long ago. So. Yeah. I love it. So if anybody was listening and let's say they either had, they were a photographer or they were coaching a photography business, uh, what what's the number one piece of advice you could give them? Um, learn, learn to live in Whoville. Learn to live in, <laughs> yeah, learn, yeah, learn to I've live in Whoville. Bridge. You got to yeah. help me okay, expand okay. on that. Yeah. yeah. See the, see the, see the teaser there. It's a little teaser, right? Got everybody paying attention. Um, <laughs> it's not how, but who. 
it's not how about who. And a lot of photographers are very really solo entrepreneurs, a lot like our coaches here. Um, but we can also have a team. It doesn't have to be solo. A team could be somebody on, on five, Fiverr, right? Hiring somebody to do something or somewhere else. And that's our, that's our team in a bigger space. But you don't have to do everything yourself. It's not about how, how it's about who. If you want to do a podcast and you don't, and you're better off at selling, find the who to do the podcast, get it done and sell where you can do 10 times more business than actually trying to figure out how to do a podcast. Yeah, love it. Good. Would be fair to, I've, I've got a saying that I use incredibly often, uh, but it's just your greatest successes will come through other people. Would that be consistent with what you just said? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah. I told somebody today, I'll just leave you everybody on this, is that COVID, it wasn't my fault. It wasn't anybody else's fault that had businesses that declined because of it. But you can take everything away from me, but you can't take my knowledge. Yeah. This is no, it. I'm good. So. Cool. Well, Scott, we're all excited to uh, see your magic on um, yeah. Friday. And again, folks, virtual business coaching mastery is what we're talking about. Scott's going to be one of our presenters. We're excited to see what's going to happen and uh, hear all his magic. And if you're not there, make sure you are. But Scott, appreciate you, man. Appreciate opening up, buddy. Right on. Good job. Thanks. Appreciate it. Bye. Okay. My boy, Tony, has got a question. Tony, you're self-muted. Going to unmute yourself. Tony, there hey, he is. Tony. Hey, hey, what's going on? Hey. I wanted to ask this question because uh, I'm really excited about the group coaching software and uh, I know what I'm going to do with it, but I wanted to ask you where you see the group coaching software fitting into the overall strategy in coaching, meaning we've got the Elms video series and things like that. So is this yeah. going to replace that? Is it an additional service? And if it's an additional, you know, where do you think, it, where do you see it fitting in? Yep. Um, First, great question, by the way. High five. Pat, I'd like to hear what Pat has to say here, but let me just give you your Elms. It's different. It's like a, um, think of your Elms as $100 a month, and it's it's a guided 52 week. You know, you got the audio, you got the video, you got the downloadable workbook, but there's no active involvement from you, right? You're just basically, right. give, it's a really good giveaway. So if I were to go to a local accountant, I can comfortably position my, uh, you know, my e-learning system, the Elms, is $500 a month, six grand a year at full retail. I would tell the accountant, if you go to it and you find me organically online, you know, you're going to get it discounted down to, you know, 100, 200 bucks a month. But full retail, it's 500 bucks a month, six grand a year. I want to donate. I want to give away 10 memberships to you because I know, Mr. Accountant, you're, you're dealing with business owners, obviously. You want them to grow. Um, the uh, challenge that you have day to day is that you end up getting, you know, business growth marketing questions that you don't feel either qualified to answer. You don't want to answer. It just adds to your busyness, but you know, the importance of them having a roadmap. Well, here's what you're going to be able to do moving forward. And especially to the guys that don't have the foundation, like those trying to get to a million, as opposed to those at 10 million already, give them a free membership, to the e-learning system, bingo, bango, bongo. Um, you just went to the accountant and gave him $60,000 of value. Um, so we just, you know, you heard Whoville from Scott here a minute ago. So you're Santa Claus over the Grinch. You're going to the accountant and giving something away. And 90% of the coaching consulting world would be going to the accountant and trying to take us something away. Like, like we're Santa Claus over the Grinch. We want to be giving away, not taking away. Right. So when you, right. you go to the accountant and say, send me clients. And then when they pay me, I'm going to pay you a percentage of it. And when they stop paying me, I'm going to stop paying you, right? I, I've got an eight-year-old daughter. She would be smart enough to be able to come up with that value proposition, right? That's not attractive. And that's why the accountant pretends like he's interested, um, placates you, but then never calls you back, never replies to your emails, and you wonder why you can't get them back on the phone. Anyway, so, so that's the Elms. That's my giveaway. That's $100 a month, no engagement. Now, the, the group coaching software which again, you're going to see and you know, rapidly improving here. We kind of like the 80, 20 is going on that 20% we're filling in the blanks and some mad improvements coming. Uh, this is one where you're, you're plugging them in 
to a guided, there's multiple different module sets that you can give them. Like if you meet somebody who sucks at lead generation and sucks at sales, you can put them in a specific group that's going to have specific, you know, videos uh, lending themselves to sales, right? So right. basically, you will then get together, like they will get the lesson, but then they're going to get an email and they're going to get invited to the group call on, you know, whenever you want to do it, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, so then you're going to be there and say you got 10 people in the group and five show up to the Q&A call. You're going to be able to open them up and just say, so tell me around sales, around conversion, around market dominating position, around X, Y, Z, you know, what this week's lesson was, tell me what would be the number one challenge that you would have? And then they're going to say what they're going to have and you're going to banter back and forth. Um, you're going to have some templated questions that you're going to ask automatically. Um, so, you know, here's, an, here's a question that I have emailed to me as an example, and you're going to answer that and kind of riff. And Pat has laid it out so that the talking points and the worksheets and the PowerPoints for that call is all laid out, all scripted, all ready to go. So the answer is that they're getting guided, but then you're doing a weekly call where, um, yeah, you got a weekly call where they're going to be able to do Q&A, a bit like we're doing right now. So, okay. and logically, that's going to be worth more. Um, and you know, assume that's 500 to 997 a month for group coaching and then one-to-one -one coaching. So those in, in the group coaching, you're going to be able to see, Pat, could you just take them to where, uh, oh, there you go. Can you take them to where they can see the level of engagement, like 25, 50, hundred percent engaged. So now Tony, and of course, for everybody listening, you're also going to be able to see how engaged these folks are, right? Like we don't have this on the Elms, but like one of, like one of your clients, um, you're going to be able to see that if they, you know, downloaded the workbook, they, you know, watched right. X amount of the video, you're going to be able to see their engagement level. When you get somebody who's super engaged, I got to tell you that basically they have a problem and they're looking for, you know, to solve it. You're going to be able to sell that person something more expensive, like one-to-one -one coaching or your live seminar or whatever. Mm -hmm. But so that, so logically, this is going to be a little bit more expensive and it's going to lead to some higher level engagements at say two grand a month instead of, you know, 497 a month for a group. And then you're going to put them into 1997 one to one. So, so that's the, um, so one's kind of like a giveaway, no Q and a, uh, no level of engagement measured, et cetera. And just, you know, one 52 week walkthrough. And then this one's got all the different options for the different um, you know, types of groups that you can put them in. And then they're also, and Tony, for you, but for everybody listening, there's going to be, we'll call it an LPW Q&A. So let's say that you've only got three members in total in your group coaching program. And you're thinking, look, to roll up and do Q&A for three people might not be the best idea. A, there might not be a lot of banter. And B, uh, just, you know, might be a better use of my time. Well, we are going to have an in-house session will you be able to send all of your folks to us and then we're going to do that we're going to open you know we'll have whatever number of people on there a couple hundred and we're going to do q a for the entire group at one time so is that going to be live or recorded live live okay and, yeah cool all right that answers my question so, that's exactly where i thought you were going to go uh so uh yeah. i'm excited to see it come out yeah, cool. Actually, hey, Pat, can I ask you, you know, I spoke to William earlier and he, he got the comments. Um, I don't know if I'm wording that right. You know, the new comment section. Are you able to show show that? Oh, I was just going to come here. Like, I don't have any um, students set up in this, but uh, <clears throat> under the analysis, you'll be able to see, of course, their name, what percent of the video they watched. Uh, did they download the pre-meeting questionnaire? Uh, did they attend your meeting? Um, did they download the meeting worksheet? What score did they get on the quiz? Did they do the post-meeting action steps? What profit impact on that module they think they could get and their overall engagement level? So in terms of like, this is in a sense a CRM, a client relationship management. Um, it's uh, like a foundation of one at least. You have a really good insight into what that uh, business owner is doing in your group. And you can think about it this way, if they have a high engagement level, then there's someone that uh, you might wanna reach out to and say, hey, look, you need some 
this is where you'd upsell them into individual coaching or consulting. If they have a low engagement level, you have a chance to reach out to them before they quit and disappear on you and encourage them to, to engage at a higher level and motivate them to do that and show them the benefits and give them individual help. So it's a much more intelligent system. I'll, I'll put some uh, people in here in this group before Friday, I guess, to make sure we have some real stats here. But uh, the messages, what were you saying, Carl? Um, you know the new comment um, where they're gonna be able to interact back and forth uh, with the client, where we had it on the, um, we had it on the client side, but not the coach side. Do you know what I'm talking All about? Right, um, yeah, there'd be like a, a, a message center for both That's the it. coach and the, the uh, client there. I'll just see if I can pull this up and if it's working. I might not have the live version here at all, so we'll see if it's going to be available just now to me. Maybe I'll log in as a this young man. Maybe he doesn't have any groups. So let me log out. Sorry about that. Coach Carl, is automatically talking... logged. What's that, Tony? Are you talking about real time messaging then? Yeah, I think it's like uh, an email here that goes out. Um, so, yeah, I'll be able to, like, this is the student side. It'll be something similar on the coach side. Uh, even a little bit better, I think, because here the the uh, I can compose an email and as a student and send it to whoever I want. On the coach side, I was looking at what William was trying to create today, and it's not live yet, but there'll be a, something similar for the coaches, but they'll be able to click. Do they want to send it to the whole group or do they want to send it to an individual? Oh, cool. If it's an individual, there'll be a drop down of the of the group members' names. Uh, or they can just send it, you know, I could send one to you, Tony, even if you're not in my group, and then CC something, uh, someone else as well. So this will be going back and forth. And then um, what's supposed to happen is that if the the uh, client or the business owner sends me as a coach a message, when I come into my message center, I'll have a, like a little number one there, shows as a message waiting and I can go and see that and I can reply back to him and he'll get it in his message center. So cool. That, that's the idea. It, um, we might be able to have a notification to an email as well. That would be the, the goal. So little things like this we're working on here, yeah. That's awesome. This is literally today though, Tony. This was sure. created. So just FYI. But anyways, there you go. Tony, right, what do you think? So. Any other questions? No, I think that's all I had for today. I appreciate it though. Cool, man, this buddy. All right, Tony, I'm gonna put you back on. Yeah, mute. let me uh, weigh in on Tony's question there, Carl. Okay, Talk that's about, right. I want to speak. Yeah, please. The best use of the group coaching. And, you know, I think there's gonna be so many different scenarios, and as we go forward, different coaches will come up with new scenarios that we hadn't considered. But I look at this as um, it could be an option you sell if you're doing a focus group or an event or a webinar or something, selling from the stage, selling in front of a group. It could be a, it could be something that you upsell someone to from a membership. It could be a downsell from group coach or from a regular coaching or consulting. Someone says, you know, I can't really afford your $2,000 a month fee. It's like, well, why don't you join my group for, you know, just $500 a month? We're going to get you results. We're going to give you a 200% ROI guarantee, whatever, right? So you can uh, downsell from your coaching offer, and then you can upsell later to coaching once you've got them engaged and you're giving them value. So it's another way to do it. Um, I know there's some coaches that all they want to do is group coaching, and all they want to do is put people into groups because they don't want to have their time taken up. They want to scale their business big. So um, that's a couple scenarios there. I think on Friday, Adrian's going to walk through several different ways and uses where you might consider group coaching. 
Uh, so you won't want to miss that. But uh, yeah, there's just, I mean, there's so many ways I think we could use this. And I think we're going to find out more and more as we go along. Yeah. Agreed. I love it. There we go. All right, buddy. We got okay, Tony. Laurie's got a question. Laurie, we're Laurie McNaughton, fellow Canuck. He's self muted. There you go. Laurie, how goes it? Uh, good, how are you? Fabulous. What's happening in what's happening in Laurie's world? <laughs> well, I'm doing a deep dive uh forty next starting next Thursday. That'd be the first one that I've done, so I'm kind of excited about that. I did awesome. uh, I was listening to one of the podcasts and the guy talked about a three month tryout period. So I charged the guy sixty five hundred dollars for three months and after that it's four grand a month if he passes. Oh, nice. But my Hi. Guys, Love it. Hey, can I just ask a question? You're you said you're doing the deep dive forty, is that right? Yeah. So what did you do the jump start twelve? Or is this an exist can you walk us through the dynamics of the this individual, the, the client? Yeah, he's somebody that I've been uh, talking to probably for two and a half years or so off and on. And oh. <clears throat> I sent him a, or called him up, left him a, a message about the, you know, finding the, because he's got a, his company did $27 million last year. So did mm -hmm. a, finding a million dollars in profit in 45 minutes or less, he called me up and he said, well, you know what, you got my attention. So went through the, the uh, jump start 40, I uh, went back and forth, uh, talked last week, he asked me for some references, I sent him three references, talked to him the day before yesterday, and he says, yeah, I'm in. So, like I said, 6,500 for the first three months, and I positioned it as, you know, if, uh, you know, you turn out to be a good client, then we'll move forward from there, uh, and it'll be four grand a month. So he already knows that he he's got his eyes wide open that if he decides to engage, it's going to cost him four grand. What are you doing? Yeah, you're doing four grand a month. Yeah, it'll be either four grand a month or it'll be a you know say two plus contingency, which I'm a little concerned about just from the perspective of, of uh, you know it's related to profit. But he he's a good guy. I'm pretty confident we can work out an arrangement there. But um, yeah. Uh, you know, I'll blow him out of the doors here in the first three months, and then he'll just, yeah, let's just roll this on. <laughs> That's what I see. What kind of business? It's a uh, traffic control company. Oh, boom. So what do they, so walk us through the dynamic. Can you walk me through the dynamic of the business? How do they, what's their revenue model? So they uh, work primary with, primarily with cities and uh, municipalities, or I guess municipalities. So. Edmonton is one of their customers, uh, Sherwood Park, the Duke, um, and they do all traffic control kind of work. And so it's, it's a um, tender business, so they have to yep. do tenders, um, but they've done exceptional work. And so they're getting more and more business. Uh, he's, a, he's a pretty smart guy, and he, he's part of uh, tech, and uh, but he, you know, he's working seven days a week, uh, 65 to 70 hours a week, uh, pretty well neglecting every other part of his life. So he wants to uh, focus in on, you know, continuing to grow the company, but less and less relying on him being there all the time. Beautiful, love it. All right, and you feel like you got a good handle on it? Yeah, no, I've worked with quite a few guys like this, so I feel really confident in the, coaching end of it uh i haven't done a deep dive 40 before i've gone through it myself so yep. i the only thing that i i'm kind of concerned about is how long it's going to take mm -hmm. uh, i've scheduled uh five hours with him two two separate uh times two and a half hours each oh good job yep i'm hoping we'll get through most of it if not all of it by then and then uh put together the uh report and then i'll go sit down with him and his brother and we'll go through the plan for the next three months Love it. good stuff Lori. high five sounds like you got yourself a little bit of a 
a winner on that one for sure. Like I said, what did you say they did? Twenty-seven mil. Twenty-seven million uh, was their last fiscal year. Yeah. yeah. What kind of margin are we talking about? Pretty pretty tight, or what kind of Actually, what kind of profit? Uh, two and a just shy of two and a half million dollars in net. There you go. Cool. Well, there you go. Show them the money. Okay. Tom Cruise, Jerry Maguire style. Show me the money. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. Okay, Lori. Well, high five, buddy. Appreciate it. Oh, and what uh, was there anything else you uh, did? You have another question on the software or about the event? I saw the events uh, because I don't think I'm getting any uh, emails. On about- I think Adrian sending all the login. You know, tomorrow, um, Thursday, Tuesday. So Wednesday, tomorrow, I think it all uh, going to hit your inbox. So if you got any questions, you just email Adrian. He'll be able to direct you. But you're no worries there, and we'll be ready to rock and roll uh, first thing Friday morning. So it starts Friday morning. Yeah, correct. Yep, I'm good. Awesome. Okay, Lori, anything else? Y'all good? No, that's everything. Great. Okay, thanks, buddy. I'll put you back on mute. Yeah, I was um, going to say to Lori, um, Lori, Lori when you do a when you do a jump start or when you do a deep dive forty. Uh, I would go through ahead of time and just try and see what you can um, out of the 40 areas. Look for maybe 20 that you know you're going to focus on and just make a note of the things that you're likely not going to need. Um, You have a very good sense that you won't need. Um, And so I'd say with five hours and if you focused on 20 to 25 areas in five hours, it gives you some time to do some rabbit trails which are often beneficial, but uh, you should be able to get through 20 areas, 25 areas in five hours, if you're focused and you're not, uh, you know, just if you're if you're being more high D than high I, you know, you're not uh, shooting the breeze too much, you'll get through it, but you've got to stay quite focused in that. Okay, sounds like a plan. Excellent. Yeah, let me also, let me share my screen here, just, and you've probably seen this already, but, uh, uh, I just uh, put your numbers in a in a jumpstart 12, and you got 27 million as revenue. You find a 3% profit impact in one area. You've got uh, at least whatever 325, 324 thousand dollars of increased profit. Yeah. So if you were doing ROI, this is kind of fascinating to see a company this big, because we don't often. Um, you know, work with companies this much, but uh, let me just throw this in here quick and <clears throat> see ROI here. Let's say your monthly investment in coaching is 4,000. You got 48,000 a year, you got a 675% ROI from coaching. And that's just one area of 3%. Yeah. So, yeah, just fantastic possibilities with this client. You do a deep dive and you'll probably find a good 10 areas, three to five percent each. Yeah. So you're going to hit it out of the park. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. We're going to keep those numbers averages down, though, because it'll like Absolutely. You mentioned it'll blow right out of. Yeah. You know, looking at multi million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, and public tender is another animal as well, if if that's how they're marketing. So they can't do a lot of things traditional companies would normally do with uh, their right. marketing and advertising. So, um, but there are things like, especially, um, well, we don't have them here in this one, but in the deep dive, of course, policies and procedures is a big one. I mean, we could probably go through a few of these. Um, do they have a sales team? No. Just okay. so. Yeah. Um, close rates would be something maybe. Initial close rate follow up. That follow up would be important. Follow up. I know. Sure. Um, probably some digital marketing comprehensive there. Just growing their presence on the internet. Content marketing in there. Um, yeah. What else? Alliances and joint ventures. Policies and procedures. Trust, expertise, education, strategy, market-dominating position. Some really good areas there you could go through. 
Yeah. Hey, um, and Laurie, can I give you an outside the box idea that you might want to throw at them and it might be a big win for you as well? Sure. Um, actually, question, you did say that you have history with this, with government tender, you know, getting successfully uh, winning uh, government. No, I would, I've worked with companies that do government tenders or tendering type work, but I wouldn't say that I've got an inside scoop on it. Okay. All right. Well, that's where you need. Well, here's an example of something you might want to do. Um, so you'd, you'd involve them because they're like at the end, these guys are making tw and did twenty seven million dollars, put two and a half in their pocket. Like they're not sitting there trying to make a mortgage payment. These tend to be the types of guys like the reason you're in there. You know, example, I'd give you Tony Robbins. It's always funny when you go to Tony Robbins. It's the people that are there that really could afford to not be there. And it's the guy that's not there eating potato chips on the couch that would probably, uh, you know, gain a little bit by listening to Tony Robbins do his magic over four days, right? You get the idea. So it's the people that come, if you go to an event where, you know, inter internet marketing and whatnot, again, there's going to be a percentage of the room who are highly successful internet marketers, and they're just trying to take the next step. Anyways, without meeting these guys, they did $27 million last year. I'm guessing they've got a body of work where they've been successful, or, you know, for a while. And again, they, they put, you know, two and a half mil, um, away in profit last year. So you go to them and say, look, you guys might be interested. Uh, are they in Edmonton? Yeah. Well, just so here's, the name of the, here's the name of the joint webinar that you run in conjunction with them. If they're interested, you put it to them. But how we won $27 million um, in government bids over the last 12 months in Edmonton. Right. So you do that, and then there's going to be companies that are like sitting there right now staring at their computer going, how the heck do I, A, apply for this bid, um, and then B, successfully get it, right? And they, they're they thinking about, you know, getting the politician, you know, out for beers, right? Putting a few beers in his belly and saying, hey, would you accept a trip to Hawaii for you and your family to make sure that that bid gets, you know, successful by my company instead of somebody else's? Um, you know, these guys could actually teach them the strategic way that they've gone about winning these bids. And right. you, consequently, they'll do the event. They probably like the idea of teaching people the stuff that they've learned. Um, and then you will then, um, you know, get yourself some $4,000 a month clients from folks that are looking to, you know, start putting in tenders for these, uh, the jobs that could be won by the city of Edmonton. Yeah, like Outside that. the box but could be a lot of fun and it could be a way that they could give back and a way that you could get yourself some kick butt clients that are similar to these guys. I like it. You like it? There you go. But, but again, but get the relationship started. That's not something I would start with. This is something that, you know, this is, you know, six, 12, two years into the relationship. Uh, but again, go kick some butt with them. And uh, there's something else you could think about, but great because you, you get a four thousand dollar client, you want to get more four thousand dollar clients. That's a that's a bit of a hack, a bit of a you know, an alternative way of doing that. Cool, like it. Okay, awesome. Okay, Lori, anything else we can help you with? No, I'm good. Thanks. Beautiful. Put your back on mute, Kimberly Jones. We're coming for you, Kimberly with a Y. Self muted, Kimberly. Gotta unmute okay. yourself. Hi, how are you? Hey, hey. You're doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. I had my presentation yesterday uh, with the boutique, um, and it went pretty good. I um, I did a lot of preparation before, so I didn't uh, bring any type of computer. I brought the report, and I talked about the um, areas that I had researched because. I felt that he was only giving me a half an hour. So I didn't want to overwhelm him with trying to figure out uh, what terms he didn't know or how to explain the terms. So I said, you know, just based on the research, I picked uh, the joint venture, the market domination uh, position and uh, leads and upselling. And uh, he really liked the section on the the J, uh, the JVs. So he was really excited about learning more about turning that, uh, turning those uh, relationships into revenue sharing agreements. So he was interested in that part. Um, but he did ask me about references. 
So I really didn't know how to, you know, approach that without having any, um, you know, any um, presentations or, you know, satisfied client stories under my belt. Okay. So, all right, got it. So basically they're saying they're asking for testimonials, so to speak. Um, and you're wondering how you combat that. Is that it? Yes, please. Yes. Actually, if you want to know, whilst you were talking, I got a text and my daughter has COVID. There you no. go. Oh my no. God. Throw up in my mouth. Anyway, so I'm a little bit anyways. So I'm going to get a lot of work done over the next 14 days as I'm not allowed to leave my freaking house. Anyway, okay. Um, so, but uh, did I, did I, did I, is that what we're looking to answer? Uh, they want yes. testimonials if they learn how to combat it. And first of all, I mean, now that's one part of the question. Another part of the question is when do you decide which is best to fill out those um, those questions before meeting with the client, or do you do them prior as a means of um, preparing, you know, some of the report? Yeah, which, oh, the financial questions? Yes. Yeah, no, you did, well, look, I would send it to them in advance to say, hey, you know, just have these ready, right? But. The bottom line is that even when you say that, there's a chance that they're not really going to have them, like they're gross in net margin. And all you do is take a little bit of a flyer. Um, as you know, like when you go to open, when you open up the assessment, it'll give you the option of choosing all the different, um, all the different categories, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so you'll be able to do that. Um, so answer is you send it to it before, but do feel comfortable if you don't, you just roll up and Again, and, uh, the, and there's a debate to say to not do that because see, when you show up and you say, what are your revenues? What are your gross margins? What are your net margins? And they're not going to have a freaking clue. This right. works in your, right? Because they don't know what their damn numbers are. Um, so again, there's, there's two trains of thought there, but either mm -hmm. can work in your favor, right? So okay. the other thing is the way, so just look, the, the question on testimonials and who have you worked for, look, when they're asking this, I got to tell you, it's a positioning problem that the way you got in the door is, you know, wasn't strong enough, if you know what I mean, because they really shouldn't be asking that. So, you know, the whole process is designed, you know, you've got your book, you've got your website, um, you've got all the right questions, you've got the software that you pop open. I just, you know, and this isn't just for you, Kimberly, this is for everybody listening, but your, your game plan um, is absolutely that you don't want um, them to be able to do it right gotcha. mm -hmm. um, you know or you don't want them asking that question there's a positioning this is why i've said many times like i wouldn't coach somebody who didn't see me speak in public because generally speaking my level my retention on that client is so significantly high like so you know much higher than when i didn't and it's kind of one of those things when i say jump um i want them saying how high not you know should i you know why why should i jump right right so anyways, but the bottom line, and this is where you've got Pat, Adrian, myself, and all the other coaches, you know, you just say we instead of I, you know, when we worked with, here's an example of what we did. And again, you want to be, and you know, after they ask that question is too late, you want to be pre-framing all of this. And then what you're going to find is they're going to stop asking that question, right? Because you're just going to be talking from more of a place of wisdom and kind of authority as opposed to, you know, not having that in your back pocket. So answer to the question is that it's, it's one of those things when you get the question, it's a tough one to combat. I I'd even answer it differently. I have like, we've got, you know, a lot of coaches who put coaches underneath them when that coach asks, um, you know, Hey, can I speak to some other coaches? I got to tell you, we get about a 90% predictability that that person is not signing up. Um, even when you do give them the phone numbers and they do phone the folks, they sure. come up with some logical reason why they're not going to move forward. So bottom line, okay. it's a little bit of a tough one, um, but you've got all the other coaches. Um, you can, again, speak to some, you know, go to the Facebook group and say, hey, has anybody worked with a, you know, a beauty, you know, business to do to be mm. okay. And hopefully somebody can come and you can use the old we versus I if they'll, you know, allow that and give you permission, et cetera, et cetera. But, um, but yeah, that's, 
it, it, it's a bit of a, it, it's one of those, but I, I do want to tell you that you want to frame all this stuff up so that you avoid, the, like nobody gets me on the phone and asks my credentials. And I don't mean that to sound anything other than just matter of fact that it's just not open up for negotiation because of the way I'm positioned myself. Sure. Okay. But I've been Thank doing you. it for a long time and you can't expect to be able to magically snap your fingers, but we, we got to play the long ball around here. All right. And prayers for your family. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we'll be all good. Two bananas, two bananas. <laughs> my my sanity might be more, uh, as we sit here in this house, I'm sure everybody's going to be fine. But, well, anyway, it's all good, Kimberly. Thank Can't you so much. Can't wait to see the emails on that one. No, oh, I'm already <laughs> crap. Have mercy. Anyway, it's all good, Kimberly. Appreciate you. Thank you. There we go. Pat, uh, actually, Pat, can I, sorry, I should throw this to you. What, what, anything else you'd say to Kimberly to help her out? I'm not sure I did the best job uh, there. No, I think like what you said is absolutely true, but if you get caught in that situation, um, I think they're looking to see your authority and that's really what they want. Can they trust you? Do you have authority to help them? And maybe you can think about, it might not work for you, but I think what I would say is, you know, whatever, Mr. Jones, that's the wrong question. If they say, do you have testimonials? I say, Mr. Jones, that's the question. They go, what do you mean? The question you should be asking is, can I find you significant profit? So, and then you don't let them answer. So then you right there and you go into a barrage of questions that they go, oh my gosh, these, I've never thought of these questions before, or that's a brilliant question. So for example, and you need to have a, like a, a few in your pocket that you can bring out anytime. For example, um, what do you say to a prospective client that would cause them to think that they would be an idiot not to do business with you? Because that's what we're gonna find for you. Okay, yeah. um, let me, and then you go through the software. There's a whole bunch of great questions in here. Um, let me see if I can, in the valuation, one of my favorite here, I pointed out once in a while here, under valuation, one of my favorite questions. Um, Mr. Jones, are your marketing and sales processes documented so that sales are predictable? Um, are a large extent of all your systems, process, policies, and procedures in place? This question number seven is a brilliant question because they can. There's no one that can say yes. No one does this, so they have to say no. So if you come out with four, five, six, ten questions out of the gate, um, and they just have to admit every single time that they don't have it, there might be one in digital marketing. I'll have to go and look here. I haven't kind of memorized all these. Um, no, it's not that one. Anyway, uh, Kimberly, that's what I do. Um, you might not feel comfortable uh, kicking back like that, but if it happens uh, more than once and um, it's always worth a try because if they're questioning you that on that, um, there's a lack of trust from the gate there that you haven't built in the start. Yeah. Uh, I totally get it. Yeah. Cool, maybe let's do this. Let's open up some of our heavyweights here. Tony, I'm gonna come to you. Uh, Dave McKenzie, I'm going to come to you, and I want you guys to help Kimberly. Tony Plies, you're self-muted. All right. Yo, Tony, hey, buddy, what would you say to Kimberly? Well, you know, if you, I, I agree that if you do get that question, you haven't probably uh, positioned yourself correctly, but, you know, you're going to get that question from time to time, and what I tell my clients is that, you know, first of all, I work strictly on NDAs, you know, non-disclosure agreements. But more importantly, I don't want my clients spending a minute of their time helping my business. Yes. So it just is it so that everybody understands what you're saying. Like, if this is your client and your job is to make them busy and keep them focused, and then for them to pick up the phone and spend 15 minutes selling you and your program seems insanely right. disingenuous. Yeah, and, and I don't want them doing that. I mean, even if, you know, if uh, that's the, the course that you go down, I don't want my clients helping my business because first of all, it doesn't make me look very good. If they've got to, if I've got to give out references, 
and my clients are taking phone calls from other people, it, I think anyway, it doesn't make me look very good. Uh, but more importantly, like I said, uh, you know, you wouldn't, and I will put this to the the new prospect this way as well. Would you want to get, you know, 10, 15, 20 calls from prospects wanting to know about me? Because after that third phone call, they're done. They don't want to be talking about me. Um, and whenever I ask them that, I said, would you, do you want to get phone calls with people asking about me? And they'll say no. You know, and, and they'll smile because I say it with a with a smile as well. I kind of laugh about it. Would you want to be getting phone calls? And they're like, no, I don't have the time. Exactly. So I'm not going to ask any of my clients to do that. Um, you know, and I'm like, no. if you need a reference, then obviously I haven't done my job of showing you what's in it for you. And if, you know, you have even the slightest idea that I can actually deliver on this, yeah. then you know you're gonna to want to take advantage of it because you're gonna be you're gonna be asking yourself down the line what if and you, yeah. and you don't want to so, go there. Yeah and Tony can I say and you and Kimberly what you gotta do is you gotta say everything Tony said and you listen to the authority in his voice. Like it's just like the answer like ask me a referral and I'm gonna say no. And yeah, I'm like, I not told him no. And I'm not like exactly. Like that's it. So just the answer is no. So let's continue. Um, that's over. just a lack of trust and if you don't trust me we're all good. So anyway so that Hi, fi Tony. Appreciate it. Awesome, man. Yep. Okay, I'm going to put you back on mute. Dave McKenzie. Or is it Dave, let's see what he has to say. Mr. McKenzie. Oh, yourself. You got to unmute yourself there, buddy. You were unmuted. You muted again. There he is. Dave. Hey, hey, how would you help Kimberly? Oh, Dave, can't hear you, buddy. Okay, while we're working that out, I'm going to go to Mike. Mike Manu, we're coming for you, buddy. You're self muted. Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike. Hey, buddy. There he is. Hey, Mike, we can hear you, buddy. What's going on? Not much, man. I had to turn the blower off. We got uh, water damage from the freaking monsoons for four days. <laughs> oh, so that was you doing there. your hair. The only blow dryer, <laughs> only dryer going in your house is your hair, man. We've all seen it. We've all seen it. Uh, Alex, Alex is laughing. He's falling off the, the chair. Right <laughs> Glad I can make him laugh. Okay, so okay. tell. Well, how would you help Kimberly? What would you well, say? what I would that I, I learned a long time from Dan Kennedy. It's like, well, what would I do? Am I going to give you bad references? Yeah. I, I could give, give my first. whole family. I could give my whole yeah. family. You know what I mean? They're going to say great things about me. So, yeah. never, so you never, throw it never, back never, and just never, kind never, of make never, her never. silly for like once again from a place of authority. You throw it back and and kind of like help her with her, help her or him that they're asking a silly question, right? A absolutely. And again, I think you said it best because I came in at the end. It's the pre-framing that was done. There's no trust factor. They don't believe you can deliver the results that you're promising them. You yeah, got to go it. back and see how they got on the call to begin with and where the breakdown is. This is it, man. The entire sales process. Nobody builds a sales process quite like you. How big your the company that you built, the Mac Daddy, what did what was your top end revenue? Oh uh, when I when I left we were about seventy five million a year. Um, it it got it got up to over a hundred million. That was in direct sales. That was network marketing. And that yeah. we started that in night in ninety three and the company was eventually bought in two thousand 16 by a bigger public company so i don't know what the numbers were at the end yeah bingo bango bongo so mike knows a thing or two about putting together a sales process let me tell you that okay but cool okay say hi to alex for me and uh appreciate it mike thanks guys no worries buddy and dave oh there he is dave you're live oh here you oh i see you're in a different there you go okay you got two profiles okay. going on dave can you hear me yeah, um, uh, one of the things for Carrie, uh, interesting, I, I heard about this company, Bill Bishop, who helped me with the process I use with the scorecard that I did in the uh, virtual number two, uh, referred to that company in Edmonton, and they actually uh, have done all the roundups in Prince Edward Island, that was their creation, because they said, in Canada, and I think Scotland, they referenced Scotland, no one has ever been killed in a roundup. 
in a car accident or roundup. There may be more fender benders, but compared to regular intersections, it's the safest thing to do. And I know that's one of their specialties. So it was kind of cool that he's from Edmonton doing that. So um, what are you calling it? What? What's that? What are you calling it? Well, it was from the, Bill Bishop. And uh, what's the round up? Roundabouts. Oh, I was going to say round. I thought you said round up, but I'm like, isn't it called a roundabout? Okay, there you go. Okay, got it, got it, got okay. it. So that's good, Lori. <laughs> Hopefully you take that away. Really, really, really popular in Atlantic Canada. And that, so they're building them. They're, they're not building any more intersections. It's all round, roundabouts and that, so cool. Has anybody yeah. seen, uh, what's, what's the vacation, European vacation, when he gets stuck? I lived in Australia and they got roundabouts <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, exactly. And they go around and around and around. I've, I've had that happen at times too, but anyway. Yeah. I've never driven on the left-hand side, but my parents went over to Scotland for a, their 40th anniversary, and they said that was the toughest thing, was, you know, driving on the road wasn't too bad, but when you get, they got to those roundabouts, driving on the wrong side of the road, it was quite an experience. So. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So, so Kimberly, uh, would you help Kimberly, yeah, Kimberly. getting this about, have you helped uh, with testimonies? Here's what I say, uh, you know, because I, I very, very seldom hear it. But if I did, I would just say, hey, everything I'm going to do with you is strictly confidential. And that's the same with all my other customers. And uh, I said, you know, if they want to share, I mean, I, I just picked up a new customer today and was from a reference. So if they want to share, if I said, I get tons of references, but I never ask for them and and they just come to me but i i just my customers don't need to know why their business is growing and who's helping them unless they want to tell you yeah because uh, that's, that's their business but i can't even remember the last time i was asked for a reference because if you're getting asked for that something happened if you don't going in there you have to be ans asking all the questions and they're so busy answering your questions and pat's right there's so many great questions from this website but or from the the, the software that yeah. if, if you're asking questions, you're in so control, and they're in, they're too busy answering questions to be thinking about anything else. I yeah. mean, the big the only the only reason somebody's not going to go forward is if they just have no money, and if they're asking for references, that's just an excuse to say I have no money, and that so, uh, and that's that's my mind. Two bananas. There we go. And I just want to so thanks for that, Dave. Appreciate it. Uh, and Dave, by the way, you'll do this month. You're. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be about. Four, I'll be about 47 this month. Down a little bit, but that's my fault because I'm taking it a little bit easier in July. So. <laughs> there you go. And you're, put your feet up. Put your feet yeah, up. August is going to be good though because I picked up a couple of new contracts for August. So. Awesome. So there we go. But guys, again, you're listening. Thanks, Dave. But you see how um, we opened up a few folks, all of all slightly different approaches, but everybody coming from a place of authority. Uh, when somebody says that, again, you got to look at it. It actually would come back to a topic that I've talked about on uh, the podcast a fair bit, but mental toughness. It's like very, you know, you can measure your height, your weight, your this, your that, how much you can bench press. Um, what you can't measure is your mental toughness. And I say, when somebody wants to cancel your coaching contract, I think that's a real good example of how you're like how, you know, the measurement of your mental toughness within your business. Um, so when somebody asks you um, for referrals, I want you to think of that as an opportunity for you to show your mental toughness and your chops um, and just like the experts we just opened up and what Pat had to say, you just from a place of authority, you just know. And if that's look, I'll pack up my goodies and I'm, I'm good going home, right? Like if you don't think I got the chops, if you don't think that I can help, if you don't think that my system can help, if you don't think whatever, do you know what I mean? Like from a place of authority, um, this is what we're doing. This is how we're moving forward and uh, smell you later. So that's where you got to come from. Absolutely critical. So there you go. But anyways, um, that's all we got. So. So there you go. So my day is ruined. <laughs> In case anybody's wondering, oh my God, I'm going to throw it in my mouth. I cannot believe this. Oh God. Anyways. All right. Pat, my man, almost done. Any words of wisdom here before we bolt? 
Well, I'm sorry to hear that, and uh, hope uh, yeah. Sage gets better quickly. And it's not Sage. I know it's Sarah. It's Sarah, 22 year old. Oh, okay. She works in the bar. Yeah, it's not Sage. Oh God. Oh. Anyways, anywho, anywho. I hope you I'll can find, sneak but... out. Yeah. Oh man, I don't know. Anyways, all good. Okay, folks, appreciate you guys. Kenya, Pat, we love you, man. We appreciate you. And uh, for those of you that are not um, registered for Virtual Business Coaching Mastery, you're going to be missing out in a very real and tangible way. So I get your butt there. It's on Friday. So look after yourself, folks, and we'll speak to you soon. Adios. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.